be true to your VC. You may have heard the song, I believe it's by the Beach Boys, Be True to Your School. And, you know, it's interesting, the, the lessons that you learn at small scale uh, translate into the lessons that you learn at bigger scale. And that's why they say that money doesn't make you more greedy or less greedy, doesn't make you happier or sadder, just accentuates more of what you already are. And I believe that. That's why the lessons that you learn early in life and the character that you develop early in life propels you forward. And what happens is when you're young and immature, you think just about yourself, and then it expands slowly, slowly, slowly. Then you start to think about your parents, and you start to think about your family, and then you start to think about your community, then you start to think about your nation. So I think too many founders perhaps just think, you know, as VCs, as kind of like a money pump or a, uh, you know, value add in terms of, you know, uh, strategic hires and other things, uh, an opportunity. But it's really you know, a partnership, you have to like, you know, love your VC um, in terms of like making sure it's the right match and that their goals are aligned and that you really feel a resonance, a heartfelt joy actually towards the, you know, paradigm that they're building. And there's so much variation in VCs that things are changing so much. I mean, it's interesting with the Jobs Act and how, you know, things are going uh, crowd finance now to a certain degree. There's different engines like Start Engine and WeFunder and a few others. And then you have the SPACs and you have the uh, uh, you have the uh, direct listings. Then you have SoftBank, you know, still with the mega fund. So being a VC or an angel investor, you know, it's kind of like you're being pulled in every direction. And then you have the pandemic on top of it. Uh, it's interesting, you know, uh, I've listened to different, you know, podcasts and follow the industry as close as I can with the time that I have. And Shamal's done a couple of interesting podcasts. I mean, obviously, he first he did Virgin Atlantic SPAC, and then he did, I think it was Next Open Door, and then he did uh, Clover Health. And he's, uh, I think, lined up three more SPACs. And there is, uh, you know, most VC firms and even celebrities and other things are, you know, we live in a age of, of tech disruption. I mean, you know, Stripe and PayPal and Venmo and, and Square and Robinhood. I mean, these are the new banks. Um, you know, like uh, JP Morgan and others are getting into blockchain. And, you know, they'll just like the Internet was a little bit co-opted by, you know, a uh, big industry. You know, blockchain may be the same, but, you know, because of the law of accelerating deterrent, returns and the shortened uh, uh, adoption product cycles, you know, it used to be that it took generations for new technology to take hold. Like think of the phone or something like that or the steam engine, um, you know, even the airplane. Um, but, you know, now, you know, cell phones is like things become obsolete in months, if not, you know, uh, uh, you know, sometimes weeks. You know, TikTok just took over America, you know, uh, in an instant, you know, Instagram came out of nowhere. I mean, obviously they were bought by Facebook, but they got to a billion dollars uh, in I think like two years or so. So soon, because the Fortune 500 is all, all being disrupted, you know, the companies that, that uh, uh, you know, are in the Fortune 500 are turning over much more quickly. And the first trillion dollar company, well, Apple is the first trillion dollar company, but the first trillion dollar company, you know, to, to reach a trillion dollars in just like maybe like two years or five years is going to happen, you know, I think in our lifetimes if we're, if we're relatively uh, middle-aged or younger. And I think that, um, you know, they say the first trillionaire, uh, Bill Gates says the first trillionaire will be an AI and somebody else famous said that the first trillionaire will be in climate change. Uh, it's going to be, you know, something related to solving huge problems, whether it be through quantum computers or AI or, uh, you know, whatever it is. So getting back to loving your VCs, you know, it's kind of like leveling up. It's kind of like, you know, when you're young, you go for one kind of spouse. And when you're older, hopefully you both grow together so that you become different people, more mature people, and you grow together rather than growing apart. You know, the job that you want is different as you get older. The investor that you want is different. The, the startup that you want is different. So, you know, attract the right investor into your life and then uh, be true to your school. Be true to your VC.